About one quarter of the universe's visible mass is helium. This fact alone is one of the most spectacular pieces of evidence that our universe began with a bang 13.8 billion years ago. Asterisk. And not only does this prediction verify the Big Bang, it also implies that there are three types, or species, of neutrinos, which seems completely unrelated. Let me explain. About a microsecond after the Big Bang, the universe was cold enough that protons and neutrons wouldn't melt. Now, of all of the baryons, which are particles composed of three quarks, protons and neutrons are the lightest. Consequently, it was these particles that began to condense out of the quark gluon soup in abundance. And because they don't have exactly the same mass, the neutron is slightly heavier, the equilibrium state has slightly more protons than neutrons. Roughly, it's because it's easier for neutrons to turn into protons than vice versa. But as the universe expands and cools, the rate of conversion changes, meaning that the equilibrium distribution changes. Essentially, protons only efficiently turn into neutrons above a certain temperature, and the reverse reaction can happen at a slightly lower temperature. But once the universe cools below that slightly lower temperature, the neutron and proton abundances are frozen out. They don't change anymore. So the longer the universe stays in that in-between temperature range, the lower the neutron abundance at the end of this whole process. But of course, the amount of time that the universe stayed in that temperature range depends on the rate at which the universe was expanding. And as a consequence of general relativity, we know that if there are more neutrino species, the universe would have expanded faster. If there were fewer, slower. And that means that the abundance of neutrons after freeze-out critically depends on the number of neutrino species. Now all of this can be calculated with fairly straightforward thermodynamical considerations and just a sprinkling of phenomenological quantum field theory. So now the question is, what information do we need to feed this calculation to make an explicit prediction? Well, we know from independent particle physics experiments that there are three species of neutrino. Furthermore, we need to know the rate at which neutrons decay into protons. It's about 15 minutes. Some other details, like the mass of the proton, the neutron, and the helium nucleus are also needed, but these are also independently measurable. So what do we end up predicting? Well, after almost exactly one second, the protons and neutrons freeze out, leaving about six protons for every neutron. However, it's still too hot for helium to form, and so some of the neutrons end up decaying into protons as the universe continues to cool. By the time helium-4 can form, around 200 seconds after the Big Bang, there were about seven protons for every neutron. Almost all of the surviving neutrons then joined, in pairs with protons, to form helium-4. From that ratio of 7 to 1, we can do some arithmetic. If there were a total of, say, 10,000 protons and neutrons, that would mean that there are 1,250 neutrons, which could form 625 helium nuclei, by using up 1,250 protons. That leaves 7,500 protons and 625 helium nuclei, meaning helium makes up 25% of the baryonic matter by weight. And if we go out and observe the universe around us, we find that the baryonic matter in the universe is just about 24% helium. Pretty incredible evidence, if you ask me. That asterisk at the beginning? It's not quite clear that the Big Bang was actually the beginning. What we do know is that our laws of physics are not equipped to explain the behavior of the very, very early universe. For that, we'll probably need quantum gravity. About a microsecond after the lower the neutron abundance at the time of the whole <sighs> and as a consequence of general relativity, we know that we know that now all of this can be made quantifiable just with by the time helium form form helium four. So what is 